One of the easiest ways to add feedback into G-Game is the flash effect. It is super easy to implement and it gives instant clarity to what is happening. As example, white flash effect in Hollow Knight gives you immediate feedback and you understand that you dealt some damage. And we're going to make exactly that. My name is Alex, I make video games and I teach you how to make them too. And in this episode I'm gonna show you how to implement simple flash effect that can help you with three important things. Clarity, game feel and consistency. And last one is especially important. Because as indie developers we have to use different assets from different asset packs and lots of them do not have on heat animation like this chest for example. But with simple flash effect I can easily fix that. So by using it you make all your assets work in harmony which makes your game overall better. But before we dive in this video is brought to you by well me. If you want to learn more about game development, I have a very comprehensive RPG course that teaches you everything you need to know. It has tens of thousands of students that are already making their own video games. And you can join them by clicking the link in the description below. Now let's get started. So to make flash effect, you're gonna need a material. And I'm gonna call it on damage feedback material. Then you need to go to the shader over here and change it to GUI text shader. Now if you apply this material to a sprite renderer, it's gonna look like we applied flash effect to the object. And the best part, if you have some sort of elemental damage, you can change the color over here to let's say show the fire damage or maybe ice damage. And to make it all work in the script, we simply need to switch material to the one we created, wait for a little bit and then switch it back to original one. And I'm gonna show you all of that right now. We're gonna go ahead and make a new script and I'm gonna call it Entity Vfix. And again, ignore everything I have here. We don't need it to make flash effect work. So I'm gonna do a reference to Sprite Renderer just so we can replace material on it. And we're also gonna need a variable of a material, original material, so we can revert it back to the original one when effect is over. Then we're gonna need serialize field, private material, on damage feedback material. This is where we're going to assign material we just created. And then we need serialized field, private float, damage, uh, feedback, duration. Let's say it is 0.15f by default. And you know what? I feel like this name is quite lengthy. So maybe let's do on damage we fix material and on damage we fix duration. Yeah, I feel like this one is a bit better. Now let's open a wake. And in the awake, we want to get component of a sprite renderer. And it may be that your sprite renderer sits on a child object, just like I have in my project. So in that case, it's better to do get component in children of a sprite renderer. If you have component on the parent, it will get it. And if you have component on the child, it will get it as well. Just like I have over here. You can see animator is a child object with a sprite renderer. And if I attach entity fixed to the parent object, still it will find sprite renderer we need. All right, so let's go back and let's save original material by taking it from sprite renderer material. Then we're going to make a coroutine that will switch materials, wait a bit, and then go back to original one. To make a coroutine, you're gonna type private i enumerator and you choose this one. It will create system collections automatically. If it won't, you have to do it manually at the top over here. So let's give it a name on damage feedback coroutine. Actually, we switched to Wayfix, so I'm gonna do on damage Wayfix coroutine. And then inside, we take sprite renderer material and make it equals to on damage Wayfix material. Then we're going to use yield return new, wait for seconds, of on damage wave fix duration. And this is the main reason why we use coroutine, because thanks to this, we can pause the execution, wait for a little bit, and then continue the execution. In this case, we're gonna wait as long as we choose by setting value over here. All right, and then after we waited a little bit, we're gonna do SR material equals to original material, just like that. Now we need to start this coroutine every time target receives damage. And for that, we better use a public method. So I'm gonna do public void, maybe something like play on damage wave fix. Why not? And then over here, we simply need to start the coroutine. But before we do that, let's create another variable over here. It's going to be private coroutine on damage wave fix coroutine. And we need it 
to store the current running coroutine we have because if we don't do that we cannot keep track of the coroutine and when you're getting damaged by multiple entities you will start multiple coroutines at the same time which is not really okay it's better to stop the current one and start a new one and that is what we're going to do so let's go ahead and make on damage wave fix coroutine equals to start coroutine and this is how you start the coroutine by literally typing start coroutine and then you add on damage we fix coroutine over here just like that now you will start the coroutine and you will assign it into this variable at the same time and simply before that we're gonna check if current coroutine is not equals to null if we did assign it before because if we did we need to stop this coroutine so we can start a new one uh, we're gonna do stop coroutine on damage wave fix coroutine again this part is not necessary i just do it to avoid bugs all right very good now you simply need to attach this component to any object that's supposed to receive damage then you have to find this component and simply call play on damage wave fix function uh, let's go ahead and take a look at my example in my case i have a player game object and i have enemy game object in the prefab over here and both of them having a script that is inheriting from the entity so what i need is go to the entity and get component of a entity wave fix here. And since I have everything protected, I'm gonna do the same entity wave fix, and I'm gonna call it entity wave fix. Then I'm gonna get this component in the awake. Let's go here and do entity wave fix equals to get component of entity wave fix. I'm doing get component because I'm sure I will place it on the parent game object. And then whenever you receive damage, in my case it happens in take damage function, you take entity wave fix and do play on damage wave fix just like that now i'm gonna save this and go back to unity on my enemy i have to attach uh, entity wave fix component and i need to assign this material so i'm gonna do that then i'm gonna do same for the player let's go to the player entity wave fix and assign material now whenever my target is getting damaged we're gonna see a nice flash effect let's test that and player is flesh and white, which clearly indicates that player got some amount of damage. Very cool. Now, subscribe to the channel if you did learn something new, and don't forget to check my RPG course by the link down below. And I'm gonna say thanks to my Patreons and give special thanks to Siramo89 and Gianni Maroni. Thanks to you guys, these videos are possible.